Good evening. Uh, not sure if you heard this one before, but I have a disclaimer before we start tonight's program. This is the third in a series of four on alcoholism. So I wanted to remind you that as you're partaking in this sort of idea, I want you to be aware to please consult your doctor, your mental health professional, your outreach sponsor or specialist before adopting any change to your dietary physical health regime. And as always, let's get started. Tonight we continue a four-part series on alcoholism. Tonight we feature someone who tells his story on a regular basis via live stream on YouTube and Facebook and actually was one of the first people I talked about my series of addictions of that of alcoholism, but also overeating and gambling. Tonight we hear his story. This is The Venture Forward. Good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon, wherever you may be, and welcome to The Venture Forward. My name is John Venturini, and I am a recovering addict of alcoholism, overeating and obesity, and gambling. I have spent the last 626 days tracking food, I have spent the last 523 days sober, and I've spent the last 205 days not gambling. For me, it's a co-addiction of all co-addictions in the sense that everything weighs in together in one package. And it's something that has been holding me back for so long in my life. 22 months ago, I realized I needed to do something about this and awfully quickly because I was dying. So over the last couple of weeks, you've heard the stories about the overeating and the obesity. Last week and this week, you're hearing stories about alcoholism. Next week, we'll talk about gambling. A uh, couple of quick notes before we begin. I will say that if I was in the state I was in four years ago and giving the sort of uh, weird times we live in, that's the best thing I could call this in 2020, I don't think I would have been faring so well as I am right now. And I wouldn't be able to stand in line for three hours in the cold to vote. And I hope all of you had a chance to vote as well. Let's go through some quick comments and then let me introduce this evening's guest. Sarah says, hi, my mental health professional says it's hopeless. Uh, I seriously doubt that. Good evening, Sarah, I hope you're well. Merck says, JV is the guest tonight. This is going to be good. Merck, I appreciate you saying that, um, but the guest that we have tonight is gonna be even better than me. And quite frankly, anybody is better. Let, let's, let's be clear about that. But we have a really great guest tonight, and I think you'll enjoy him a lot. Sandy says, hi, JV. Hi, Sandy. How are you? Glad you're here tonight. Christina, ooh. Christina says, hi, John. Hi, Christina. Hey, sir, how are you? Good, uh, good people in the chat on YouTube. Good people all over the place, Facebook and YouTube. I'm so glad all of you are here. Leah, hi. How are you? 
Sean, how are you? What's up? Hi, Susan. Glad you're here. And thank you, Sarah. Thank you for uh, for telling me that. It, you know, I think, as, as I've said to others before, if there was any year that you had to vote, this was the year for sure. And I'm really glad um, I, I braved the cold temperatures and the windy weather and stand in line for three hours to go ahead and do that. Uh, so that said, I want to introduce tonight's guest. Tonight's guest is a fellow live streamer. He's been doing this a lot longer than I have on this very topic of, of alcoholism, of also sobriety as well. In fact, the name of his show has the word sober in it. I want to introduce you to Mr. Sober James. Hi, James. How are you? Hello, John. How are you? I'm okay. well. How are you? <laughs> Do you see my codependence acting up already? Before I answered how I was, I I went straight to how are you? That's that's how we think. See, that's that. I knew from the first moment we ever talked, I knew we think the same way here. So I get that. You said how are you, and I'm I'm like, hi. How are you? It's a battle. It's a battle of the codependence. It absolutely we, is. He who first says how he is loses. I, I, I'm doing well, John, and I, and I see you're doing well. I've been watching your channel, The Venture Forward. I'm excited. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, that I, I intro knew you were going to say crazy. something about the theme music. I knew I, if, I, if there got me little green apples, you were going to say something no, about that. Didn't. <laughs> That shit is fire. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Well, this is the venture forward. It is the venture forward. And, and oh, tonight, man. tonight, sir, you are on the venture forward. It, and also, I'm being told that the volume's a little bit high, so let me uh, let me fix you a little bit there. Hang on. right There we go. I got to apologize. I couldn't figure out how to get my fancy cam. Uh, so I'm on. Uh oh! Did it just cut out? Because I'm seeing no, no, reloading. You're, you're still here. We just could, we could just see your right eye. Yeah, I'm on my phone. I like the right eye uh, look. It's it's a more like, uh, hey, can you play the the music while I do the right eye look? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, everybody. I'm here to tell my story. I, I drank recklessly. I was I almost died. I have a I have a very inspiring, pathetic, hopeless story of drugs and alcohol very juicy and i've been sober for five years but first we're gonna do the venture forward music right uh if you want to venture forward i'll i'll, I'll play five ten minutes ten seconds of it it's gonna give you five all right minutes yeah and... that's yeah. that's all i need what that what that music oh wait, it's not even playing what am i talking about Yeah, it's playing on my end. It's hard to get the right eye. This is this is difficult. All right, I'm wasting everyone's time. No, no, you, you wanted to give hipsters hopping another play, it, and that's fine. I'm sure the person who put that sort of free license music is very happy about that, for sure. Oh, did you? Is it called hipsters hopping? Hip, hipsters hopping. That's right. Hipsters hopping. You all right? Cool. There you go. Um, let me stop wasting your time, John and everybody else. My name is James. I'm a grateful recovering addict and alcoholic. I drank and used drugs recklessly for 20 years uh, since I was 14 years old, and I've been recovering for five since January 18th of 2016. Um, John and I know each other for about a year now. We've become friends. He's a, I'm sure you've heard his story, but he and I have a lot in common as far as uh, powerlessness over multi-addictions and behaviors, compulsive, obsessive behaviors such as overeating, uh, gambling, alcoholism, and, uh, and all of that. And uh, if you're interested in all of this, I, I have a channel of my own. It's called the Sober James channel, just like it sounds, Sober James. And I live stream addiction recovery live streams every Monday and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, I'm happy and healthy today, but it wasn't always that way. I've been to jails, institutions, and death, just like the book says. It's all true. The big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is all true in my uh, experience. 
But let me stop blathering on and just, uh, John, where were we? What, how are you doing? I, I, I'm doing well. I, I was figuring, you know, the way I've so I've had a couple of I've had a couple of interviews now as far as addictions concerned with respect to that realm. So I'm going to go back to the same sort of area in the sense that for you, given that you had addictions to a couple of things that you've mentioned, what was the sort of event or series of events that caused you to go down that road to begin with? Well, it's been suggested that I had a rough childhood. My parents got divorced when I was two. This, of course, is the short story. Uh, and uh, when they split, my dad got custody. Long story short, my dad and my mother are different people, and I was split between them, and I would spend every other weekend at my mom's, which wasn't a, a very cultivating, uh, nurturing environment, allegedly. Later on in, in life, I'd figured out that this was probably true because I always went to my mom's house whenever I wanted to do whatever I wanted. She gave me a pack of cigarettes when I moved in with her when I was 17. She's like, do you smoke? What do you smoke? Marlboro's? Cool. Now I have someone to smoke with. So like that was my mom compared to my dad, who was very is very conservative and, and like financially savvy. And I got the best of both worlds. Uh, my mom was artistic and my dad is financially savvy. I also got some of the worst. My mom's side is riddled with alcoholism and behaviors like uh, like I have. Mm. Um, it, it, so it to answer your question uh, it was a rough start and it's been suggested that my childhood was rough and uh, <clears throat> I have a video on my channel alcoholism is alcoholism a disease and it's basically I go through my the my my childhood before I discovered drugs and alcohol at the age of 14 I was in all kinds of trouble uh, involving you know getting kicked out of school and um, criminal activity and class clown and you know so i do i believe the disease is in us even before we discover what we perceive the medicine is which is either alcohol food gambling sex you know uh tv netflix whatever so before we discover our drug of choice which is essentially just our perceived medicine for our we don't know. We're not doctors. We don't know what's wrong with us. We just feel restless, irritable, and discontent even when we're little. We try to fix it with, I thought curse words were interesting when I was like five, so I, I got hung up on curse words. Uh, getting in trouble in school, I was all, you know, we get that rush, and that's like a dopamine hit. And then you discovered, I discovered drugs and alcohol, and, you know, the stories are very similar across the addiction um, recovery, uh, you know, community uh around puberty is when people usually uh, average start drinking um that's when the most restlessness ir irritability and, and discontentment happens we discover those things tenfold in puberty you know we don't know what's going on we don't know how to go to a party we don't know how to, we drink that beer and all of a sudden i had my i had one of my first sexual experiences lovely sexual experiences uh you know and, when I was drinking my first alcoholic beverage. Right. So like double whammy, who, I mean, and like I say on my channel, it's not our fault that we were born with, uh, you know, this kind of personality, but it is our uh, responsibility to treat our disease because it's very irresponsible type of disease when untreated. Absolutely. And I, the one thing I've always said, not only on this show, but also within your group and other groups is the fact that our love and our self-respect is exactly that. It starts within us. And then as we build that and we start putting, you know, filling our pots up with the right thing, with the health and love and respect, we can then transcend that across. But as long as we're filling ourselves with the right thing, that's true. But we're not filling ourselves with the right thing. That is absolutely not true. And it goes the other way. That's right. Um, which, which in my case, and I think a lot of people's case, that's where programs like Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous come in because you put down the drugs and alcohol, that can be quite simple, easy. You go through detox seven days, boom, you're, you're, you're not on it anymore physically, your addiction, but you're still mentally, you still have it in you. So that's when we go to, uh, in my case, uh, AA, and I learned how to be of service. I learned how to go to meetings no matter what. I learned how to listen to my sponsor and not my own thoughts. I, I learned all these things. And uh, just like you said, when you're doing the wrong thing, which is in our active addiction, 
uh, you're riddled with guilt and fear, which can alter a person's behavior. Um, even a non-addict, uh, guilt and fear can just like, it can alter your life's trajectory, um, you know, in everyday decisions, very small decisions. But uh, yeah. Um, Not to but, throw out an IFS term, an internal family systems term for a second, but the way it was described to me last year when I was starting to piece this back together, which is, I don't know, my life, the way it was described to me is firefighters. We have firefighters in life. We have gaps in our life. We have things that are holding us back. And we have firefighters that are basically putting out the fires of those things that are basically inflamed, that are, are basically sky high. Now, the thing yeah. is, we have firefighters in life that are very nefarious and awful, like drinking, like drugs, like gambling, so on and so forth. And then there are healthy firefighters in that of like, I don't know, running and weightlifting and doing things that could be just as much a dopamine rush, but has the most positive sort of effect. So it's replacing one bad firefighter with a healthy firefighter, but then also using that to realize, oh my God, it had something really bad here and I'm trying to fix that. Right. I, I, I was there when that uh, analogy was like born. I don't know who, who came up with that. Was it you or, or somebody else? But I was there. It was an interesting analogy, and uh, and it's very true. I have a lot of things that I'm obsessed about. It could be an on, it could be an unhealthy obsession about a healthy behavior, or or, or uh, you know, drinking and using drugs is not healthy. Uh, you can take one look around at your life, well, through a veil of denial that won't leave you alone sometimes, but still, through moments of clarity, we all can see what our lives are when we're drinking and using and in our active addiction. We feel icky, even if we're, uh, when I first got sober, I was, my mind was, my addict was looking for substitutes. Mm. So it went to like dating websites like Tinder and like, you know, sexy stuff that nobody talks about, you know? And uh, I thought that was, I was like, well, everybody wants love and everybody needs sex because of nature and the discovery channel. So I had these justifications, but I felt icky because a lot of people were getting hurt, including myself and many girls and it didn't feel right so we all know we all have moral compasses so we all know what's right and wrong when you when i'm i wasn't drinking but i was like dating like i was looking for those i was on tinder like all the time and if i ran out of matches it's like uh i was waiting at the liquor store the next morning for my matches to re to re-up you know it was just like i ran out of matches so like, fuck, I got to wait for the fucking liquor store to open. The liquor store matches, John. You know, the thing is, and I'm, I'm going to ask you about, I, there are a couple other things I want to discuss with you, but I mean, it, it really, the game has absolutely changed in 2020, hasn't it? In the sense that the our, our sort of, well, I'm looking to find someone new to, you know, get to know them better, not even dating, right? Just Just being sociable. And I think the mechanisms on how we do that have incredibly changed. Not and again, that's far removed from from the idea of of attraction and sex and whatnot. I'm just talking, just relating to another human being, mano a mano, or in a group. Right, we're social. We're a social species, humans. Mm -hmm. I want to bring up some comments before we continue this, because then I wanted to talk about uh, how how the channel got born and, and all that, the sort of realization of saying, well, I got something I can give. But let me go to the comments real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Des says, good day. How are you, Des, from the other side of the world? Hope you're doing well. Merck up, says, I thought, you're, I thought you were talking about you. I'm an idiot. You're not an idiot, Merck. You're far from one, and I'm glad you're here. Uh... Sean said super close up. Whoa, I, I'm not sure if it was me or it was you, but one of us had a super close up and Sean was uh, basically you're reading the, you're reading comments from the very beginning when I was doing like the uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> come on. John. I mean, you've been on you've been a streamer for five minutes. You're supposed to know all this shit. All already. of five seconds. All of five seconds. It's just it was like I, I was streaming like five seconds ago and then I came on. That's uh, the same dude, thing. I tell you one thing, you got the tech, the logistics down far, you're far ahead of the curve that uh, as compared to me. It took me like, shit, I'm still getting them down. <laughs> James, you do an impeccable job, I got to say. And and I, I want to talk about your channel in about one minute. I just have like five more comments I want to quickly get up here. 
Good evening. How are you, sir? Hope you're doing well. Hey, what's up, man? Aaron, that's another well. channel for all of you. Hey, Aaron. Wow. What's up, stranger? Uh, it's a reunion. We're getting all the family that's together. Another, that's it. For all of you watching, uh, Sober Powerlifting is another channel. Uh, you know, being born from the sober community, communities. It, it's, a, it's a cool, uh, sobriety's cool. Sober's the new drunk, John. Yeah, there, there you go. We're trendsetters. You know, we're basically, we're, we're moving this forward in the right direction. Thank you very much. Uh, sober yeah. says, uh, hi, James. Hi, John. Sean says, uh, John and James, you both inspire me. Sean, thank you. You inspire us too. You you have a great story, and we're really pleased that we're really glad that you're part of our families here for sure. Which basically we are one big giant family anyway. So yeah, I've seen better. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding, Sean. Sean, you know I I love you, Sean. <laughs> so oh, that's another channel, Sean Leary Music. Uh, Sean, uh, well, you know JV. Sean has various uh, videos. And mad content, yo. He does a he does how many how many uh, singers do you do a, an impression of in that one video? Like Sarah, he does like a fifteen singer impression. Justin Bieber. Sean is an incredible talent, and, and you know the thing is between I I know he just put out something new this past week. He's just he's, he's just such a great talent, and and, and honestly. I'm I'm so glad to know someone like you, Sean. Seriously, thank you. And I'm glad you're here tonight for sure. Yeah, my dude is is power lifting on the program tip too. Like, Sean, I I don't know. You can tell your story, but he's working a program of AA, which is a definite smart move that works for anybody who's looking for a solution to the malady of alcoholism. Alcoholics Anonymous, hundred year old program. Been doing it for a hundred year old. Don't listen to the attic in your brain. It'll tell you that AA is a cult. It'll tell you it's a religion. Just tell it to shut up and go to a meeting. I'm listening at work. Both two awesome guys. We love you, man. Thank you. This guy's always at work. He's either at work or throwing up like 500 pounds. 500 pounds. It's like 500, 505. He, he's lifting these humongous numbers that I'm nowhere near. Any time in my yeah, life he, I was near of putting up. He, he made that channel, I don't know, a week ago or so. And one of his, where the one where he's putting up like 500, his, that, that video already has like 10,000 views or something like that. It's, it's yeah, crazy. It's incredible. Sarah, Sarah says sex can be an addiction too. Absolutely. And there, is, there are groups that are there to help people that are addicted to sex. And, you know, obviously it, it's Ooh, one of the Hang on. That... Uh, let's talk to Sarah here. Is sex can be an, an so, so what do you mean by that? Is there a way we can get her Sarah on the phone? to talk about her sexual addiction. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Sarah. Yes, sex can be an addiction too. Sa Sarah, he means well. He, he means well. It's okay. Uh I come from a time where, but you know, Howard Stern was, was like breaking ice. Remember that, John? Mm -hmm. Remember when Howard Stern <laughs> was breaking ice? Right. He was breaking ice with the with the vibration caused by the subwoofer that, uh, that, that uh, you know, Dusty Rhodes was sitting on in her panties. And it's gone downhill Dusty awfully Rose quickly. Uh, <laughs> Leah says, I think, in times, I think in times like Rose that, we are looking for sex or people to soothe our pain, but they can't. That's absolutely right, Sarah. Uh, Leah, Leah. Wow. I'm thinking about Sarah's comment. I'm saying, Leah, sorry. Leah, that's absolutely true. And, and the thing is, it's just as much an addiction as everything else that we talk about here. It most uh, definitely is. And uh, if, if those of you... Sex and love ad addiction, uh, uh, anonymous, sex and love anonymous. Uh, that's a real thing because sex and love emotions, we can get, I know from personal experience that, um, we can use sex and, and compassion and attention from, you know, others. I can't even say the opposite sex anymore, John. If I say that people are going to be like, what do you mean? What if I like the same sex? And I'll be like, well, do you baby. Did, did I mention to the people that are watching, viewer discretion is advised. Viewer discretion is advised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a different world we live in, right? It, it, you are no, attracted to who you are attracted to, and, and that's obviously a, a vehicle for you, for sure.
Yeah, uh, you got to be careful on that one. The other thing is when we first get sober from our drugs of choice, we go to the sex and that now there's not only one person we're hurting, there's two, you know, because you're going to, I mean, I haven't had a drink in five years, but I am still struggling with uh, my character defects affecting my relationship. Uh, you know, I can still lash out. And, you know, what helps it used to uh, calm me down was a, was a drink. Now meetings calm me down. You know what meetings. I mean? That's 100% the truth. Everybody who uh, still has doubt. I have my doubts about the program of Alcoholics Anonymous too, but I'm telling you right now, save my life. Sarah says, just shut up and go to a meeting. Love it. And also asks, uh, is he a friend of Rex? Now, now Rex is the Triceratops that sits on my back wall over there on Fridays. I, I do the VF talks. He, he, he calls himself Rex because he thinks he's a T-Rex, but he's really a Triceratops. So Rex is known to have a very potty mouth, and I think he's somewhat inspired by you, James, just to be honest with you. Well, Rex, I'm glad to have you with us. Oh, we can't see him right now. You know that, right? Oh, I'll, I'll bring. Hang on. I, I, I mean, come never, on. Jeff. I would never do this on a Tuesday. Shit. Hang on. Hold Get on. your shit together, John. You're right. You're a professional streamer now, John. You got to have your toys ready to display. That's right. This is this is this is Rex. So cute. I pictured a plastic thing. No, no. Uh, honest to God, uh, stuffed animal who has a, an identity problem, who thinks he's a T Rex, but he is a. Uh, He's a triceratops. But, you know, it, it's fine. It's fine. Are you okay sitting back? Can you behave today? Because you already got a foul mouth over there. Are you okay? All right. I'll put him back over here. All right, Rex. Peace out. See you later. Okay. Hey, who's that guy in the green in that, uh, in that picture behind you? What is that picture behind you? This guy? John, the, there's a guy? Nah, no, no, no. We can't see that picture, you silly. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the 500 home run hitters. That's uh, Reggie Jackson. You got Babe Ruth. You got all. It's a lithograph of the 500 home run hitters that were signed by most of them. Obviously, Babe Ruth was dead when that was made, but it's, yeah. What is that, the A's uniform? The, the one. It. Yeah, Jackson went as an A in that picture because that's how he was in the Hall of Fame as, a, as an Oakland A. Oh, cool. No one you, no you, you didn't know about that? Oh, man. I feel like I'm behind here. Well, now we can uh, here. Let's do a professional streaming segue and be like, "What baseball player suffered from addiction?" Mickey Mantle, and who was also in that. In that. Mickey Mantle did. Yes. Oh shit! All of a sudden, I like Mickey Mantle now. <laughs> many, I didn't know Mickey Mantle. Many, many, uh, many of the players that are in that 500 home run lineup. Yeah. Big time. Oh, Got a comment oh, from Des yeah. here. You give up drugs and alcohol and you find sex feels great. Then you start chasing those good feelings. And before you know it, you're addicted chasing those highs. You're, dis you're addicted chasing those highs. Yeah, it's the same behavior. It's just a different vehicle, of course, but it's the same behavior. There's a and everybody's familiar with it. Even, you know, everybody. Society. Damn straight, Des. Mm-hmm. Those, the old timers say there is a slip under every skirt. Every skirt. There you go. There is a slip under every skirt. Yeah, that's that's what they say. Wow, I haven't heard that one, but that makes damn. You know, that makes sense. I heard a very other crude saying, and what for those of you who may not know, well, at least this is the way I interpret it. Uh, that is basically, you got to be careful in early sobriety when you start looking for love in all the wrong places. Great song. You know. Because there's a slip, uh, uh, relapse. I had a friend who very plainly and very uh, seriously looked me in the eyes. And I don't know if I can, I, I'll, I'll say the clean version. He just said, you know, um, he, said, he just said, be careful out there. You know what I'm saying, young man? Susan says, hey, now, not true. Hey, what's up, Susan? On Facebook. Cool, you got the multi-streams. John, you Boom. know what? Hey, everybody here, Sober James channel. You got I'll, you, I'll bring, this I'll bring it you're back getting up. so much exposure. Uh, you know, there you go. Sober James <laughs> channel, uh, Monday and Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sober James channel on YouTube. 
How many viewers do you have right now? Do you know? Uh, can you uh, right now, I have. Uh, I, I had 25 at one point. I, I withered down to nine when we started talking to Sexy Talk, which I'm. It's, oh, get out! Oh, hey, get out! Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, you got to be careful. You can't. You can't project your own fears onto those numbers. You got to be careful now, John. You're a streamer now. Yes, I'm a streamer. You can't I, get. I got a <laughs> cap that reminds me of that. It's a streamer on it. So. What do you mean? Oh, get out of here, John. The second time. I didn't get a cap. Yeah. Streamer. What? Yeah. Was, was that, was, did you win that at a, at a pissing no, contest? I, I, I bought that. <laughs> was your stream the best? No, it was far from it. Actually, it was the worst, and I got a prize for being the worst. Streamer. Worst. Streamer. Susan also says, I think this was a nice surprise having Sober James. Great group. Yeah, great people that are in this group. Susan, I'm so glad to see you tonight for sure. Yeah, it is um, good to see you, Susan. So speaking of, of, of the genesis of, of Sober James and how that channel got started and, and you doing the, the AA, all of that, walk us down that road. Well, I started the Sober James channel uh, two years, well, yeah, a little over two years ago. Um, that's about three years after I got sober. So, well, I hurt my back about two years ago at work. I worked at a car factory, hurt my back. I've worked labor all my life. This is the short version. And I decided, I didn't decide, uh, it was decided for me that I'm not going to be working labor basically, basically all my life. Uh, yada, 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 or long story short, I discovered that YouTube, uh, just appealed to my greatest interest as far as creativity, um, marketing, production, video, cinematography, uh, stuff like that, telling my story and stuff like that. So I started um, filming, you know, a little over two years ago and I started doing like product reviews and I just started experimenting with, with YouTube and stuff. And then one day, uh, and this video is still on my channel, I decided to sit down and tell my story about being an alcoholic and I hadn't, I hadn't been talking about it on my channel. I'd just been like, you know, doing YouTube stuff like reviewing products or whatever. And I told my story and, and the editing part, I love editing. I love sitting down every part about the whole thing I like. And, but, uh, I told my story and I had no idea is that, it, but it was totally, um, I was totally pleasant, su pleasantly surprised by the outreach and the reaction to this uh, one story. And this story is still on my channel. It's, uh, it's it starts with alcoholism or something. Uh, and it's the story of how over the course of the past 30 years, I have almost died drinking and using. I have uh, lost everything. And by almost died, I mean almost died. I mean, my, my heart stopped twice and, and stuff like that. Coma, grand mal seizure, jails, institutions, and death. It is all real. And I had to stop, but I couldn't. And I discovered AA and uh, I told my story. And as it turned out, a lot of uh, people were touched by the story and a lot of suffering alcoholics were uh, inspired and they reached out in the comments and I started getting a ton of views. So I decided to make my channel all about just telling all the, the, the skeletons about alcoholism and, the, and um, just laying it all out there, the good, the bad, and the ugly about uh, addiction, recovery, how hard it is to recover and how much I understand. Um, I can understand when people contact me and they say, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. You know, I, it drives me nuts. It feels like they're, you know, they just don't like it. I don't like it either. You know, uh, um, I do like it now. Uh, sometimes I still don't, but I understand where they're coming from. That's not, you know, and I, and I can go to them and I can say, that's not the point. The point is we're sick. We have to treat our condition and AA is a way that I know does. And here's some other solutions that may help this way as well. And the re the outreach to that video was incredible. So I started to make every video about alcoholism and addiction and a hundred videos later, uh, COVID hit and um, everybody was in their houses. So I decided to start live streaming and I was 
streaming twice a day. And I was stuck in my house for like three months, uh, just like everybody else when the COVID-19 quarantine was going down and, uh, um, or COVID-16 or whatever the fuck it is. Excuse me, my bad. I forget sometimes I'm not Some on my sort channel. Of number and we mentioned the pandemic. You know, it, it, this is not, it's fine. Don't worry about it. You're good. You're well, good. anyway, long story short, I started streaming. Now I'm on my like th 300 stream and I do it twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. So uh, the channel right now is uh, kind of at a lull. I, I got a girlfriend. I'm working in my yard. The promises of sobriety have all come true. My fear of economic insecurity and people are, are gone. I'm living the life in the fifth year of sobriety. I'm just living the life. But I still maintain streaming on Mondays and Thursdays. And I'm getting back into making videos and circulating and stuff again. I'm never dropping the channel. The channel, I have gotten so much fulfillment, and you will too, from uh, putting your stories out there and having people contact you and say how much it helps. And uh, of course you'll get haters and you'll get trolls and you'll get a whole bunch of drama sometimes. But really the thing that keeps me going and waking up in the morning is I get messages that go straight to my phone when, when I get comments on my videos about people this, uh, I suffering from delirium tremens. Uh, you know, uh, you, you'll just experience uh, a lot of spiritual fulfillment and joy from actually helping people from something that, you know the deal, we, we're not proud of uh, what we went through, from something so dark, embarrassing, and like diabolically, horrendously hopeless, like alcoholism and, and, and being obese and, and just being embarrassed and like not feeling a part of society. You put it out there on, on, a, on a new vehicle like YouTube and you start getting views while you snooze and all that, and it's helping people 24 seven whether you know it or not. And, and dude, it just feels good. It feels great. You know, you know what that is, James? It's called vulnerability. When we show that we're vulnerable and we're willing to give portions of our lives and, and talk about the things that we've gone through in the hopes of helping someone else, that gravitates people to us, whether it's it's the stories about alcoholism or, or narcotics or gambling or this. People are gravitated to that because they may know someone or themselves that are basically stuck in that same sort of cycle, that same sort of redundant loop that's not giving them any sort of benefit in life. It's insanity. Uh, we, we do the same behavior. We, we do the same behavior and expect different results. Definition of insanity. And we do it every day, one way or another. We do it every day in, in uh, you know, in our behaviors. And it just, it just, it stinks, you know, and, Channels like yours and channels like Allen's uh, mm -hmm. and and mine, sober James, sober powerlifting, By the way, sober James, just passed 150 subscribers on his channel. So we wanted to congratulate him before I go through the rest of the comments. Congratulations, congratulations, Allen. You just had 100 like yesterday. He's growing by leaps and bounds exponentially. Dare I say. John, we're going to have to start lifting 500 pounds. We're going to have to find a way to lift 500 pounds on camera. Maybe we, maybe you and I can both get on each end of the 500 pounds and then film that. <laughs> oh God. I'm cutting around the comments real quick. Leah had a question. What advice do you have for parents of young adults suffering from addiction? In March, my son almost died from what appeared to be a drug overdose. It sucks. I'm sorry to hear that Leah, uh, the opiate, uh, and fentanyl now crisis is, is a crisis. I have a younger sister. I don't know how old, uh, your son was, is, uh, but, um, I'm sorry. Can you put that comment back up on sure. the screen? Absolutely. You, and her, her son, her son is, uh, 19, I believe. Oh, almost died. Well, I'm glad he's still with us. The rock bottom of almost dying, believe it or not, Leah, um, Sometimes, a lot of times, most of the time, with addiction, doesn't work. It doesn't isn't enough. The almost uh, the almost death uh, sometimes isn't enough. Hopefully, for your son, it will be. But ad advice for parents: I've never been a parent. Um, I hear it's like uh, your heart walking around outside of your body. Uh, I have a friend who's also in the in the in recovery whose son just died of a heroin overdose and. I'm sorry. He, he, the way he's handling it, 
Well, Leah, I don't know if you're an addict yourself, but um, for this man, well, this is a extraordinarily tough like man, but like he definitely did apply what he knows about addiction to his grief process, which by that I mean, he, he knew that addiction is, I mean, it is ruthless. I mean, I got lucky. John, you're lucky. We're lucky that we found a combination or, or, or we're lucky day to day. We're lucky that we remain sober. Um, many people do not. And, and it's, uh, and we're, so what I mean by that is my friend, um, grieved over his son in a way that an addict grieves over another addict. And it's basically like he lost the battle and that's understandable. So his grief process was, was smoother than, than most, but, um, for a son, and like I said, the opiate uh, crisis right now is, and fentanyl, um, I just don't, I haven't, I feel for you, Leah, um, and your son. But as far as parents with a child that's struggling from addiction, there's one thing I do know, and that is he has to come around when he's ready. There's, you can, you have to stop enabling him. I do know that. By enabling it, I mean, and it's sneaky. We don't know how we enable, but we do. Enabling can be uh, letting him stay in your house while he's still using his drug of choice, uh, giving him money, um, you know, paying for his phone while he spends his money on uh, other drugs and stuff. These are all enabling. And you're like, no, James, that's, those, that's parenting. And I'm like, no, nah, that's, uh, it, tough love is definitely an element when coming, when, when it comes to addiction because we, we don't quit until we hit rock bottom. We don't move until we, until the pain, until the fear of moving and James, is it's less not necessarily than drug use like either. And, and I'm going to say we, we profiled Leah on an earlier episode. She, she's lost a massive amount of weight. She uh, had uh, bariatric surgery done. She's lost like 135 pounds. So she knows about addiction so she's very well aware of that, and and her story. If you get a chance to see that, it's in it's in the library. Take a look at it. It's an incredible story, James. Yeah, I'll check it out. Congratulations, Leah, for overcoming and you know treating daily. I'm sure Leah knows it's a daily reprieve. This thing, uh, we don't just go to a, a hundred meetings and come out. Then you know never. I mean, the obsession for alcohol may be gone, but like I've experienced this before. It's, it's been gone before and all of a sudden popped out of nowhere and I relapsed. But uh, I've attention. learned through I've learned that it wasn't out of nowhere. I've learned how to recognize where it came from and that I could have stopped it if I saw it and stuff like that. But uh, it's a daily reprieve. And I'm sure your son knows the same thing I, when we're using, when we're drinking and using. When I was drinking, my daily reprieve was drinking. Uh, when I didn't have that anymore, I had to find a daily reprieve because drinking kills us. Some people can do it. Some people can't. I'm, I'm of the type that cannot. Des raised a, a point before he said the old timers told me not to make any life changing decisions for the first two years of being sober. For that very reason, we have to take every day, one day at a time, <laughs> one foot in front of the other. Right, Des. I've, uh, I, w I was told the same thing, and that's why a lot of people uh, get all up in arms about the, what do you mean I can't date or have sex in the first year? That's not a rule, by the way, and it doesn't say that in the book. It's a suggestion that we don't make any first deci big decisions. Uh, sex is a big decision, that, you know, um, but that's what I was told, too. And uh, two years is a roundabout number, but I like to say when we're well we can now make decisions. That's why I didn't start my uh, YouTube channel till my third year. Um, you know, I, I felt like I had something to give now, you know, it was my third year, uh, my first year, my second year, I didn't have shit to give. I was like, I was, I'm lucky to, I'm lucky to make it to my third year. Des also says uh, you need to educate children at a young age and don't sweep them under the carpet or think it wouldn't happen to your kids, which is very true, as we've seen from the opiate crisis that's in this country these days. But then Leah says, as, as all the parents in here will claim to, Leah would give anything in the world to save her son. Right. Right. The, uh, the educational thing, I mean, we all remember the D.A.R.E. program mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, D.A.R.E. to say 
say no to drugs. Don't tell. It's a Nancy uh, Reagan just, program back in the eighties, wasn't it? Dancing Is Raven. That, no, no, no. Dare the, the, the original Dare program back um, wasn't one of the major sort of the just say no the just say no campaign was in the eighties and then Dare was just a, say no. This is your brain on drugs, mm -hmm. uh, you right. know, the D.A.R.E. program. So, like, education has been a thing. But here's the thing with addiction. Uh, I'm educated. I was educated about my addiction the entire time I was addicted. Logic and education uh, and, and intellect, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it is one aspect to battle addiction, but it, it isn't, it won't work alone. Logic, uh, that's why we do spiritual things in the program of AA, like help others uh, carry the message you know, go to meetings no matter what, do service work, because it's a spiritual malady as well. It's spiritual. Uh, it can be educational and logical and, and a matter of ignorance. It's um, emotional. It can be social, sexual. It, 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 it hits all things. So, like, yeah. intellectually, you can deal with it by educating yourself and children. But really, the experience, places like this and experience like uh, – Allen's and yours and mine and anybody who's gone through it and recovered that's where that's where and you listen and and I I didn't start recovering until I started listening to the people that have recovered before me if you don't listen to people that re recovered before you you're going to find out you're going to have your own stories to tell if you live the easy way the wise way is listen to those who had come before you but none of us want to do that because we say we're different. I'm different. You know, I'll remember. I don't need to go to meetings. I, you know, this, that, and the other thing. I said the same thing. And it wasn't until, you know, I was facing death or prison uh, that I'm like, yeah, I, I think I, I'm pretty sure that I'm ex powerless over alcohol. That's when I knew. That's when I knew there was nothing I could do when I drink alcohol to uh, maintain any kind of control, there's nothing. I am, a, I am literally powerless over alcohol. Sean says, uh, your videos have helped me a lot, James. And then also he says, I still remember the first time I came across your channel early in sobriety. Thanks, Sean. Uh, it's a privilege to have you around. Uh, like I said, Sean, is, he's like in his sixth month of, he got a sponsor. He listened to the su suggestions. In the community, there's 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 a whole bunch of people. There's people that disappear and come back. Sometimes they disappear for good. Then there's people that stick around and listen to the suggestions, and they're staying sober because Sean went to AA and like uh, you know these. Well, my bad, Sean. I didn't mean to like blow your anonymity or anything. Um, sometimes I forget. Yeah, man. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just very proud of like people that like listen and then uh, they start to realize and become happier and that's the joy of sponsorship that one of the foundations of a program like alcoholics anonymous and narcotics anonymous is sponsorship because giving to another showing that person the way and seeing them uh all of a sudden i feel like i'm a, a contributing member of like humanity and i don't want to drink my life away after i after i i see what i can do by spreading my message and like uh helping you know, people like me that struggle, uh, I don't want to drink my life away. I want to wake up and I want to do that again. And that's what AA knew. And that's what we have to listen to because we don't know that when we're coming out of our, uh, you know, sick, insane addiction, we just think we know best. And we just, know, we just want our, we just want to be all right. Yeah. Without but we don't know the thing. You know, and, those who came before us know. And, and then the thing is there, there are, you know, a bunch of other programs, other YouTube channels, other Facebook channels, other Facebook feeds that are trying to do the same thing. And if you think about where we come from as those people that are addicts and, and are trying to help other addicts, we're taking the energies we used to spend on such nefarious behavior. And we've now transcended that to something that helps the community, the community of people we know, but also let's face it, the world, if you think about it that way. Right. And that's, that's, that goes back to what you were saying before about, uh, you know, we have an addictive personality. We get obsessed about things, you know, whatever. So I switched that obsessing about drinking and using every day to obsessing about my sober YouTube channel. And as it turns out, I got pretty good at that because my obsession was fueling something positive. 
I was pretty good at drinking too. I could get drugs and alcohol any day, any week, anywhere. Now I switched that energy to, uh, you know, a sober YouTube channel, maybe helping my family, you know, getting into things like uh, landscaping and, and you direct that energy. And addicts and alcoholics are very powerful people. Uh, I've talked to a bunch of recovering addicts and alcoholics. We're very powerful personalities. It takes a lot of power to, to like drink and use every day. And those without it die. And those with it either recover or go on to be called one of my, one of the terms I despise, functioning, functioning alcoholic, which doesn't exist if, in my opinion. I had a question pop up and, and unlike a channel that some of us know about where you have to put a cue in front of the channel or give me a super chat, uh, if you're a favorite of mine, you just, it gets answered right away. This is Wawa. It's Wawa. Leah, it's Wawa. Starbucks was Wawa? earlier. Yeah, Wawa. It's a, you know, Wawa. You've, you've been up here. Yeah, I, I know Wawa. I, I, I think I'm just missing an inside joke or something. No, it's it was a question of what kind of coffee am I drinking, and it, it's oh okay, I, I don't see free the comments, coffee, so. free coffee for uh, for election day. So I was able to get myself a free coffee. Yeah. Yes, election day in the good old United States of America, 2020. 2020, the year that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Well, are you, do you have a ticker that gives us coverage, John, or, or what? You got a no, you got a coverage. No, I, I, I'm election? trying to avoid that trying to avoid that as much as i can and now leah's telling me i'm a cheater because she knows i'm a star starbucks snob well i'm also a, a purveyor of free free coffee and and i, I gravitated to that leah I'm, I'm sorry i'm so sorry you get free coffee at wawa well today you do and every tuesday yeah, if, you have, if you have the wawa app. Well. Uh, do you already have sponsors john are you is no. wawa sponsoring you? no no it's they're not a sponsor no I think I think you've showed that Wawa logo and you get free coffee for life. Well, it's it's hiding now. Uh, a couple other um, comments. Uh, Susan was asking, do you, do they still have the Dare program? Yeah, there's there's a lot of contingents of Dare in, in Pennsylvania. I see bumper stickers for that all the time. So yes, and then Des says, uh, parents have to talk to children you don't rely on other people and be honest with your children so yeah the the sort of self-love and the self-knowledge comes from within you from your family from people you trust and family is not necessarily those people that are tied to you by blood those are people that are tied to your likes and and your personality that you gain family over time and we find that sometimes the family that we end up gaining through friendship and relationship and, and just the universe itself end up being more powerful than those that are actually tied by blood. So not to, not to go down that road two or three weeks from now, but it's something to think about for sure. True that. Des also says you give freely what was given to you freely. You seep what you sell, you seep what you sell basically. Well, Des, is, I believe, is talking oh, about the program of AA. Uh, and I just did a stream on this called Service Work. And, you know, it, he's talking about, that's what he's talking about. The 12th step is carrying the message. You, when you receive sobriety and, and, and you, uh, you know, demonstrate some time in sobriety, you, give it, you now give it away. You have something to give away. And you give it away for free. Sponsees, you take meetings to detox, you meet a stranger at the bus stop. And people here on the channel, people every day I meet on the channel, I'm just, you know, and that's what my sponsor told me to do. So I do it because my sponsor and the program of AA is what, get, you know, keeps me sober. Mm -hmm. Sean also says there's a picture of me with a dare shirt as a kid. And I recently saw it and said to my mom, well, that worked out well, huh? Oh, Sean, stop tormenting your poor mom. Oh, the and lessons course, that, was like a, time. that was a Reagan administration move too. I think the Dare program, which was which was an excellent administration in my opinion. It almost sounded like I knew something about politics there. I, I for a second I thought you were running. <laughs> I don't know shit about politics, but that Ronald Reagan. I saw a video of him two weeks after he was shot. Bullet missed his heart by one inch. He was given a speech. All of a sudden, a loud pop went off, sounded like a gunshot. 
He just looked up into the microphone and goes, missed me. He goes, you missed me. Two, two weeks after, a bullet missed his heart. That's all he says to another gunshot. And see, that's, you know what? Reagan for president 2020, right? Bring, bring him back from the dead. It's basically uh, hooked up to some machine or something. We got the, the, brain, the brain of Reagan. I've seen Futurama. I know the deal. Right. Message but you put it in the jar and run the country. Right, right. But I think, right. I think the Reagan, I think Nancy Reagan was the dare, the dare. Uh, well, she was know. just saying no. And then the dare program was yeah. born out of that. And I think uh, a few years later. Which, you know, it's still a, it's still a good program. Dare. They were basically saying, buck the trend. Don't do drugs. Dare to have balls and, and have a personality of your own and say, fuck, no, I'm not drinking this uh, morning. <laughs> oh, my bad, John. I forgot. Ah, I mean, heck no. Hey. not like I was getting heck monetized no. anyway. Don't worry about it. We're fine. We're good. Soon, soon you'll be monetized. You keep going like you're going. Uh, <laughs> Leah says he has my vote. Well, thank you, Leah. You missed me. Y'all go look up that video on YouTube. Ronald Reagan says, missed me. He's like, you missed me. Missed me. Well, well, whatever tomorrow and election day brings, I wish all of you good health and the best of uh, uh, the good news about sobriety and recovery. Your only job is to not drink and use. It's not to go vote, at least not for right now. It's to get your ass to detox, get your ass to rehab, get your ass to AA, get your ass to sponsor. Just don't drink. Just don't pick up your drug of choice. And that's your only responsibility. Then maybe in a couple of years, you know, then you go cast your vote. Sean says, Too many Alan drunk G. people Bullock voted is... four years ago. <laughs> the one thing I, I got to say, you. James, that, that I've been seeing a lot more in social media the last three or four days, and, and it's a sentiment I absolutely agree with. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you voted for. One, that you did vote, that you got, that you're using your civic duty to go out there and speak with your vote as far as which direction you want this country to go in. But two, and this is more important, don't, 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 don't spread, spread vitriol on what happens no matter who wins. Let's be the agents of change and actually come up with a society that's peace loving, that actually supports one another instead of spreading the crap that's been around this, this society for a very long time. That's the two things yeah, I take out of this. There's a lot of toxicity, a lot of negativity out there, and uh, a lot of people. I don't know who the hell knows what's going on. It's a, it's a, it's an epic on an epic scale. It's like a, almost a biblical scale. What's going on right now? If I dare say, but no, it's big. I mean, 2020. And I was thinking today when I was getting my mask to go into the grocery store just a few hours ago, I thought to myself, you know what, people. There's still going to be masks in 2021. So like, you know, everybody's like, yeah, 2020 is hit the fuck 2020 and all that. And, uh, you know, it's trending right now. F 2020 is trending right now. And, uh, it, I, I had the, just the, you know, impromptu thought in 2021, we're still wearing masks. Mm -hmm. Right. It sucks, but you know, we make the best of it. And that's the same thing we do with alcoholism obesity well we don't just live with alcoholism or obesity we have to treat it you know what i'm every saying every day every day every day One day at a time if you want to know how to treat obesity ask john you want to know how to treat alcoholism you ask me sober james That's right oh get that get that graphic back up sober james no it's a lot of fun there is a SoberJames.com, but uh, I don't know. Well, it has, it has the link to your stuff. Part. It has the link to your stuff up there. Yeah, SoberJames.com forward slash shop to get your, uh, you know, your t-shirt or whatever the hell. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a very good YouTuber. Merch. You it's get funny. your merch. Your, your garden variety merch up there. You find you find all the good merch you want. It says Sober yeah. James on it one way or another. Yeah, you got your merch. Oh, and if you go to my channel, underneath my videos, there's a 
Teespring shelf. I do have merch there too, including, but not limited to, a face mask that just has the face of Johnny Lawrence from Cobra Kai. And it just says, quiet! And, it, and uh, his spot face on. is the cue. The pressure was spot on. Perfect. You nailed it. It has, nothing to do, it has nothing to do with sobriety or my channel and will not benefit my channel at all. It just is funny. And uh, we need to wear masks, people. Citizens reminding us every day, no matter how much sobriety you have, you have to look for this every day, whether it's obesity or sobriety or, or whatever, right? It's a, it's a, every day as it comes, one foot in front of the other. Thank you for saying that, Susan. And then it, that, Susan. Ingi says, two great gentlemen, thank you very much for your wisdom, strength, and hope. Ingi, I'm glad you were able to join us this evening on this very, hey, very important election day. Ingi's another one. She's been around uh, the community forever, and we all we all go through it together, no matter what. Sean with uh, says a shout out to Heather Blue. Heather Blue. Oh yeah. Well, no, he's talking about the color of the shirt. Heather Blue. Here, hold on, hold on. See, I, I, I spun that another. It, 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 we'll, we'll talk about that sometime. Yeah, well, I could have took it. It could have reminded me that of my wonderful, beautiful girlfriend, Heather, whom I trashed her feelings yesterday, and we're not speaking right now, and, and that whole thing. Uh, or I could have just recognized what he was talking about, and it's the uh, Heather Blue color of the SoberJames.com t-shirt. The official colors and the official logo of the Sober James Network. Yeah, yeah, he got himself a Heather Heather Blue one. Jennifer Peace, gentlemen. Says, Jennifer Peace Fowler. Gentlemen. Peace to you, Jennifer. Hope you're doing well. Jennifer Fowler Locke. Well, you're getting a pretty good turnout on Facebook. I couldn't figure out the Facebook thing, so I just, uh, you know, kicked it to the curb. Yeah, I need both. And then at some point, I'll probably go to a third or a fourth. But right now, I'm good with the two. I'm good with the Facebook. I'm good with the YouTube. And, you know, it's working little by little. I'm happy. Good good bunch of people. Love these people. But I love the guests I have on the show. And, and James, by far, I love you too. And I'm glad you were able to do tonight's show for sure. Well, I love you too, brother. And uh, you're doing you're doing a good job. And, you know, keep it up. Thank you, man. Des says 24-7 working a program that works for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, damn straight, Des. Des sounds like he's uh, in the program. Des was actually the guest on the last episode on Thursday. Uh, great story. Fantastic story if you get a chance to, to watch it. Sean says, great discussion from two people I respect a lot. Sean, we respect you a lot, too, and we are glad that you were uh, able to join us this evening. And Susan says, thank you both for sharing. Anytime, Susan, and thank you for uh, sharing with us in, in the groups and whatnot. You're, you're incredible, too. Any, uh, any last comments? Anything you want to plug? Me? Uh, if you're struggling, you know, you're not alone. Addiction isn't a, ch a choice. But it is a choice to treat it, and that's that's the only thing we can do is treat it to the best of our ability. If you uh, need experience uh, and and hope and and uh, go to Sober James on the YouTube, Sober James on YouTube. I got I stream every Monday and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I got over 100. Well, I got 400 videos now, so check it out. There's a lot of stuff on there, and I wish you the best and hang in there. You may think you're hopeless. I've thought I was hopeless before too, and uh, you're not. Far from it. Far from it. James, it's been an honor and pleasure to have you on the show tonight, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Same goes for me, John, and I love the, the new channel. Keep it up. Thank you, man. Take care of yourself. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. As uh, Sober James, ladies and gentlemen, you can reach him at SoberJames.com. He also has uh, the up on YouTube, uh, the Sober James channel. Uh, a lot of entertaining stuff up there. I will tell a quick story. The, the video that gravitated me to, to his channel was uh, basically a, a video, an AA video from Anthony Hopkins that, that basically James put a video of or audio of up on his channel. And it was just 
The video was the most peaceful video you could ever think of. He was playing Frisbee with his dog. And it was the, the audio of that AA testimonial meeting with Sir Anthony Hopkins. It was incredibly moving. And if you get a chance to see that, I'll find a link to that and I'll put it in the... Uh, in the, uh, both the Facebook and the YouTube comments after uh, after the show tonight. But James, very, very knowledgeable guy. He's got a, a, lot, a good following, a very good following, incredible following for sure. But, you know, just, just someone who you really, you, when, when, you get to, when you get to talk to him and understand that he's gone through a lot of the things that you've gone through, he has a basic way of of talking about it but also a way for you to make that step forward and, and figure out exactly what you need to do so again james thanks for joining me tonight on uh, on this episode episode 1.6 of the venture forward and that said i'll talk about episode 1.7 which is thursday night i have another guest that's going to continue the conversation about alcoholism great story incredible story i'm really looking forward to having him on the show on thursday and then next week, we're going to talk about gambling. So one week from tonight, we're going to talk about the time where I realized that gambling was way, 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 way out of control. You had to get like 10 or 11 ways in that. And um, it's more than realizing how much money you lose. When you get the feds involved, it's never a good thing. But that's next, th next, next Tuesday. Thursday night, we continue one more on uh, alcoholism. And then, of course, Friday night, we have the VF Talks. Some more comments before we put a giant bow on this episode. Uh, Jennifer says, keep shining that light, fellas. You too, Jennifer. Please keep shining that light. There are a lot of people that look to you. And please do everything you can to keep shining that light because the words you say to the people that you know and the people that you love are very important. And Jennifer, thank you for joining us again tonight. Sean says, hope everyone has a great night. Sean, same for, to you. Hope you have a great night, too. Sober says hi to, to Ingi. Ingi says hi to Alan. So I wanted to show that back and forth. And then Susan had one more comment. I'm enjoying all this because I have sobriety but struggled with stopping the smoke. So if you use the same steps to stop, I ha now have 19 months smoke-free, several years sober. Susan, congratulations on your sobriety and, moreover, taking up the initiative to uh and tobacco for sure it's a very tough one it's something you'll find a lot of people pick up and drop off and pick up and drop off uh so susan the fact that you're picking that up and marching forward with that is incredible and keep up the fantastic work sarah says gambling is one i know nothing about even hard for me to imagine well sarah will talk a lot more about that next tuesday night for sure Thank you, Sarah. Doing so great, JV. Bravo. Thank you, Sarah. So are you. And absolutely, when you guys get a chance, go to see Sarah's site, sarahsteel.com. Incredible artist in this area, in the Philadelphia area, and just a great person to talk to. So definitely, uh, definitely take a look at her stuff for sure. And then, hey, Starlight, hope you're doing well. I'm about to put a giant bow on this for sure. So on that, I'm going to remind you, as I remind you on every episode, to stay safe, stay sane, stay strong, stay sober. You're worth it. I'll see you Thursday night at 6.30 Eastern Time, 3.30 Pacific, for the next episode of the Venture Forward as we do part four of alcoholism. And we'll see you then. Have a great night. Stay safe.